Mariners win three to one. They improve to eight and ten on the season. And because they've taken two of three against the Reds to open the year, not just two of three, they've taken two of the first three games, I should say. They have it. They finally have it. And by it, I mean their first series win of 2024. Go over the scoring plays that made it happen. Jonathan Class A doubles to center to score Mitch Garver, one nothing Mariners. Reds answer back in the fifth. A Stuart Fairchild ground out to second that scores Jake Fraley. Ties the game at 1-1, but the Mariners get the lead run right back in the half inning. Mitch Garver walks to score Julio Rodriguez, 2-1. And in the sixth, the Mariners add a little insurance. Mitch Haniger singles to center to score J.P. Crawford, 3-1. Mariners win. Oh, it feels good to win a series. <laughs> it feels so good. It feels so good that I'm going to have a little copping fit real quick. Gosh, the ability to pause these videos now is so great. Like, I can't do any editing. I mean, I could. There's a YouTube thing that allows me to do it, but just the ability to pause is so nice, especially while my allergies are just going nuts. So let's talk about some negatives. The offense was not great tonight. That's probably an understatement. Um, Luke Rayleigh was awful. You know, he shows his athleticism night before. And quickly follows it up with a, oh, maybe that's why he's not playing every day. Jonathan Class A, congrats on the RBI double. It's great to see that he's had early success early on, but the other at-bats tonight were pretty bad. He's looked great in de on defense and everything else, um, but let's just, being honest here, this was a rough one. Uh, struck out 15 times tonight. That's not good. The real negative I want to talk about here, and it ends up working out fine. I did not love how Scott Service managed the bullpen tonight. So they go to Andres Munoz in the seventh inning, and I have no issue going to Munoz earlier than the ninth inning. None. I've talked about it. I thought the decision to bring him in Friday in the eighth inning against the Cubs was one of the best decisions he's made. I didn't love it for this situation because he was coming in to face Ellie De La Cruz, who is the biggest offensive threat in my humble estimation. Spencer Steer's pretty close, but the biggest offensive threat, that's fine. My issue is you're bringing him in to get that out, and then you're facing the bottom of the lineup. Stuart Fairchild, Santiago Espinel, and Luke Mahale is kind of a waste. And, you know, he does give up, give, end up giving up the hit, and we'll talk about it because, oh boy, we'll talk about it. Finally, uh, oh boy, we'll talk about it. That's a positive, by the way. But I didn't love that. Go get one of the lefties. And Sacedo was currently available because he gets the save tonight. Have him in that situation, have Stanek work the eighth, and then have Munoz work the ninth. Because I want Stanek, or excuse me, I want, well, yeah, I want Stanek facing the bottom of the lineup, and I want Munoz facing the guys at the top of that lineup. I just did not love that decision at all. I have no problem going early. I have a problem going early for that situation. Don't save him for a save situation that may never happen. But don't use him for that situation. Go have Sacedo or Spire, and maybe Spire wasn't available tonight and you wanted to save Sacedo for the late innings. I don't know. I just didn't love that decision. I don't love that I have to cough again either. But you guys tell me. You guys tell me if that was a... If I'm overreacting. I'm not even going nuts over it, just didn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to me. Uh, and then the other negative is how some of the guys in the bullpen pitched, and in really by how some of the guys pitched. R Ryan Stanek just didn't look very good. Now, he should have been out of the inning. Ty France makes a horrific play, and then Josh or Stanek is late getting over to first base. I also think they may have tagged him. I thought they maybe got him on the back of the leg. I'm holding the back of my leg right now, but you can't see it. 
because I would never show my legs on this channel. Um, they're good legs, you know, but you, you, you got to pay a little extra for that. Sorry. Um, I thought he might have clipped him. Either way, he was way too late. And I joked a bit on Twitter. If you are one of those people who thinks that baseball players aren't athletes, <laughs> You, you had a strong case watching Ty France and Ryan Stanek on that play. That was bad. Anyway, he should have been out of it. But that doesn't mean he pitched well. Command has been woeful for a lot of these outings. And it's just another example of how badly this team needs to get Matt Brash and Gregory Santos back. One of the two would be great. But getting both back would be really helpful. <laughs> Because seeing Taylor Sassetto and um, Brent Thornton warming up to close the game out, all due respect to Sassetto, who once again gets the job done, it's not the same thing. It is not the same thing. So there's my negatives. There was an offensive lull to be sure in this game, and I didn't love how the bullpen was managed. But let's start with some positives, and let's start with the biggest positive, simply Seattle. The very best in Seattle sports gear. Great stuff for the Kraken, Seahawks, Mariners, Huskies, Storm, Sounders. You can find it all there. Once you find everything you're looking for, use code MOLLYWOP15, M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5. Automatically takes 15% off your order. It's a great deal. www.simplyseattle.com, MOLLYWOP15, and there is a link in the description. I mean, positives, obviously, Logan Gilbert. He's been just phenomenal. Phenomenal this year. You take away those three homers he gives up in Milwaukee. Again, you can't do that. He's been as good as any starter in baseball. Didn't have his best stuff tonight, but more than good enough. More than good enough against a talented Reds lineup. Not the best lineup, but talented. If you had, if for some reason the Mariners made the postseason today and you had to line things up to be your starter for game one, obviously, how is it not Logan Gilbert? He's been phenomenal. Six and two-thirds innings, just three hits, six strikeouts, one walk. I mean, this is him at his very, very best. His very, very best, and it's been more than good enough. It's so sad that this was his first win of the season, which tells you how stupid that stat is. But man, what an impressive showing again. And, you know, Munoz does give up the hit and a walk. But, boy, in the eighth inning did he look good. Now, against crappy hitters, which is one of the reasons why I didn't love that decision. But for the most part, his stuff has looked really good this year. Really good. Command wasn't great, but stuff, stuff looks phenomenal. There was a fastball he threw tonight that had so much run on it that I think you're going to see that one shown on gifts for a long, long time. And that's not his strength. Like his fastball isn't like unbelievably straight, but he's no more for throwing really hard. And then the slider still amazes me that the slider has become so good. I got a cough again. What the heck are you doing to me? But yeah, the slider is not what he was known for as a prospect. Certainly one of the things he's known for now, for sure. Anyway, that fastball was filthy. That was a nasty, nasty pitch. And good, good, good on you. Good on you for doing the job. Just wish it would have been in a different situation in this case. Uh, offensively positives. You know, I called out. Called out's a funny word for it, but JP Crawford should have had three hits tonight. Um, love that he went the opposite way with two strikes. Yeah, doesn't have to be blazed, just make contact and hit the ball the other way. 
that's fine, especially while you're going through clearly some timing things. Very nice game from him. I will point out <laughs> the fact he didn't beat that ball out on the line drive. He hits right at the pitcher that bounces. Yeah, <laughs> we. this is not the fastest infield in the entire world, is it? <laughs> not even close, but really nice game from him. Polanco draws another couple of walks. Uh, Mitch Garver draws a walk now, and he also scores a run. The walk. That was a strike. Very fortunate there, and the Mariners were fortunate a lot tonight. And I'll take it. And I joked on Twitter that it kind of felt like the Reds gave this game away, and I'm not going quite that far. But it's not far from it. There were some big old mistakes, including walking a batter with the bases loaded. <laughs> Except I don't think he did. I think that was strike three. Glad it worked out in the Mariners' favor. But the umpiring tonight was pathetic. Zero consistency once again. Could have talked about that in the negative section. But... um. Josh Rojas gets on a couple of times. Big Dumper walks a couple of times. Seven walks tonight. The patience at the plate. And they have been helped. No question about it. Frankie Montas was terrible last night. Hunter Green wasn't terrible, but he's just not an efficient starter yet. So a great job by the Mariners taking advantage of that. Working counts. Getting to a not-so-great bullpen. Um, yeah, you know, you only only eight hits. That's not bad. but. Drawing seven walks, it's awesome. Show that patience at the plate. Jorge Polanco is a walk machine right now. Up to a 342 on base percentage. <laughs> oh, please don't make me do this again. I'm going to do it again. This is this is no fun. This is no fun at all. Um, Mitch Hanniger has looked phenomenal in the series and for most of the year. Another huge RBI hit. You know, he does strike out twice. And again, the Mariners struck out a lot today. But he just looks, if locked in is a real thing, and I tend to think that it somewhat is. And for Mitch Hanniger, it's more just staying healthy, right? I'm not expecting him to hit 300, 382, 500 all year. It's not that completely out of the question that he's going to put up similar numbers, though, as long as he can stay on the baseball field. Really nice day for him. Again. And then Julio. You know, he strikes out three times, and he's still not driving the baseball the way that we want Julio Rodriguez to drive the baseball. But he gets a couple of hits. And he played a phenomenal defensive game. A couple of spectacular catches. One that he made look routine. The other one that he didn't make look routine, but it's because it would be impossible. And he still almost overran that baseball. He's just such a great defensive player. And it's so nice, even as Julio is not even close to good enough off on, uh, good enough offensively right now, that he's still providing so much value with the glove. The throw to third base, and we have to talk about it. Of course we do. It's a phenomenal play. It's an unbelievably great throw. It's a horrible decision by De La Cruz. Some people on Twitter disagreed with me and said, hey, you got to try to make that play? No. No, not in that situation. Because no run score on the play because Jake Fraley stops hustling, and that's a mistake. And I'm guessing David Bell gave him a talking to afterwards. That's a mistake by the base runners, no question. It's still a phenomenal throw. Because you have to get rid of that so quickly. There's no time for you to think about that throw. You just have to gun it. Because Ellie De La Cruz is one of the fastest players in baseball. Should he have been going? Absolutely not. But that doesn't take away how good of a throw it was. He played a phenomenal baseball game today. 
and shows that he is capable of making a huge impact even when the offense is not quite what you're looking for. You know, you'll take two for five as a stolen base as well. Scores a run. But you're expecting more offensively. There's no question about it. And yet you're still seeing him make a massive impact with his glove. And it's easy to forget about just because we have such enormous expectations, justifiably so, for the bat. But you see what he does defensively, and you you can sort of forgive the shortcomings right now. Mm. Good win. You got a chance for a sweep. And you have not only a chance for a sweep, you have a chance for a sweep heading into a series over the weekend against the second worst team in baseball, third worst, first, that you could argue that they're the worst. The Rockies are awful. So you have a chance to get this sweep. At the very least, you get the series win, and that's great. But you have a chance to get this sweep, then head into Colorado and play the crap shack that is that team. And you have a chance to end this week 500 or better. That's awesome. That is awesome. And it doesn't excuse the poor play before because, hey, you played better in those games. What are we talking about? (laughs) A chance to get to, you know, 13 and 10 or whatever. 14 and 7. I don't know. I'm not doing the math right now, but you know what I'm saying. So you don't just excuse and forget about the poor play, but it's awesome that they have a chance to get back to a decent little record with some quality play this week. But they still got tomorrow, and it's Andrew Abbott against Bryce Miller. I think that's a fun little pitching matchup. I'm going to end this video before I have another coughing fit. Please hit like. Please hit subscribe. I love you all very much. Uh, Wednesday, going live after the game as well. Not sure if I mentioned that, but if you're subscribed, you'll have a notification for it. Go Mariners. Good win. Cough, cough. Cough, cough, cough.